episode of Next Morning Coffee. I'm Mr. King. I know my partner, Joe Cool. What's going on? What's the word? <sighs> yeah, coffee tastes a little bit different when you lose. All right. Mm -hmm. We're going to get it together. Yeah, we, um, happy to be here, but under these circumstances, <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of them, one of them losses that you, you can come back from it, but did it really have to happen? When it rains and pours, now nah, messing. So before we get into that, yeah, that's right. Before we get into that, please like, comment, subscribe, and share it with a friend. All right, so I'm looking at, well, before we get into that right quick, because that's, that's the main thing we're going to talk about, but. You know, we got to give the Knicks credit for how they got there. You know, you got there winning the first round matchup um, that people said was even, but that because they supposedly had Donovan Mitchell, that was supposed to have been our kryptonite. And then every player from top to bottom that got into the, into that series proved that for whatever their reasons were, they had a reason to belong. And they showed that the Knicks do belong in the playoffs. Mm. So we still got to tip our hand to that. Um, now, when Milwaukee went down, that opened up the door for possible going further than a first round series right. or just getting to a second round series. Now the door is open. So this is where everything now starts to get a little bit tricky for people who just maybe maybe not want to believe that the Knicks can go further. You know, yeah, I think I think I'm the problem. <laughs> now, the I'm problem. the problem. Cuz I told you I told you my goal all year long I've been telling y'all my goal was I want to make it to the second round. I feel like if we get to the second round uh players will start to want to come to the Knicks mm -hmm. or they'll see that the organization changed for the better. We're in the second round. <laughs> and like you said, the circumstances have changed. Dramatic. I want it all. Yeah. So even like last, uh, you know, with this past, when we faced in Cleveland, I was like, I want the sweep. We won it in five. Mm -hmm. Right? I said, the sweep or we're going to win it in six. Same thing. So now yesterday, I'm like, nah, I want the sweep. Or we're going to, either that or we're going to win it in six. Uh, <laughs> so I still feel like we supposed to win this. I mean, we we like Eastern Conference. Everybody saying Eastern Conference. I don't, I think I want to go to the finals now. Cause yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That's that's why. I, even though we lost, it don't seem so. It I mean, didn't seem so bad. Like we, I see where our hiccups was at, but we've been going through this all season. Yeah, but you look at where we lost. Um, you know what went wrong where we lost the game, and to me, three point shooting. And free throws is where we lost the game. Mm. Because we, you know, they was 13 for 39. We was 7 for 34. Mm. And then and then free throws, they was 23 for 29. And we was 12 for 20. So if you hit three, four more free throws and you knock down two, three more threes, all mm -hmm. of a sudden, yeah. So it's like you still play with what got you there. Because our offensive flow helped us in this series, well, it's going to help us in this series because we've seen the first half we can get to the basket anytime we want. But well, the Heat basically, they basically stole one because we have this problem all year long. But who was to say that we was going to miss all those three pointers? It's a lot, especially especially when the second half, when the Heat made the adjustment. Mm -hmm. And you got to give Spolster credit for that. Now, they didn't stop us getting to the paint, mm -hmm. but we didn't, we didn't make the right, correct, I think, reads when we were just going downhill all mm -hmm. first half. Now they packed the paint a little bit, and then when we kicking it out, mm. because you remember when the scenario on the Nick post game show, um, where Wally was showing those three instances where Brunson drove in mm. and kicked it out, and then we missed wide open threes. Right. And then the part that I was pointing out during that stretch during the game was that every time we missed a wide open three, they came down and hit a wide open three. And it's funny because this is deja vu. This is exactly what happened when uh, you know when we had Melo, J.R. Smith. We got to the second round. Players end up being hurt. Um, some players had to step up, um, and we couldn't. We couldn't hit on the three point line. So yeah. it's almost like a little bit of deja vu. And it's funny how with Spolstra, how they created that wall for Brunson. Yeah, <laughs> that's too funny. So you you beat Milwaukee, but you got to create that wall for Giannis coming down like a train. But then for Brunson in the half court setting, you built the wall on him. Yeah. So where he had to kick it out. Well, which is fine though, because. You, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to miss those wide open shots like that. Yeah, no. And and even to the great Brunson, some of his read that maybe he got too deep, knowing mm -hmm. that they were coming. So you know that's something that we got to work on. I don't think it's a major, a major thing considering mm -hmm. to the fact that 
we didn't have Julius Randle. Now, we've won without Julius, so that's definitely not no excuse. Mm -hmm. But if you take the Heat and you take out one of their two stars, mm -hmm. they're way more doomed than us. You know, because Julius, what he brings for us is he brings 25 and 10. Um, on a bad day, he brings 15 and 8. Mm -hmm. You know, and then his his probably biggest asset for us right now is that he just occupies defense. He would mm -hmm. Because we wasn't hitting threes barely in the game, um, and, and Obi was like, what, 4 of 11? They, they didn't have to worry about anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's why they could do that to, you know, you, you barely got a Grimes. The other guys can knock down threes, but they're not three-point shooters. Mm -hmm. So not having Julius there, yeah, they can build a wall on Brunson. And if Julius is not there, they're going to do that again because they don't have to occupy anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, unless somebody just really gets hot. You know, IQ or Grimes, those guys, they're going to have to really get hot from the outside. Um, it's, not, it's, it's not a must, but, that, but us having our threes going gives us a way better edge mm -hmm. if we're going to play without Julius. A much a much better edge. So, you know, they, they like you said, they stole one, but it's one they didn't have to steal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we could have managed that game a little bit better. And, and again, and, and really, I was only hoping for a split anyway. Of course, you mm -hmm. like the sweep, but let's be realistic, though, at this point. A split would be nice, but the first one keeps the morale going. Mm. So now the second one, you're on edge. Now the second one, you got to come out. You got to do whatever you got to do mm. um, to win that game. And then when, in those situations, that's pressure. Now not to say we can't go back down to Miami and win, but it just it just leaves room for why would you want to be in that scenario? Right. You don't have to. Because they don't have much. I mean, they got Martin coming off the bench. Martin should not have been that much of a factor. Mm. You know, He's doing way more for the Heat than well, he did for us. The same way we lost yeah, he basically gonna lose the same way because you're not gonna always hit your threes like that. Now, if they come out this whole series hitting every three like game one, then that's an issue. Yeah, I don't think that. I don't think that that 13 with 39 was a blistering. Their threes were timely threes. Yeah, but they hit them when they're supposed to hit. Them. Yeah, but we have to. We also too on defense. I don't think we should overreact. Jimmy Butler is not gonna kill you with 40 points. Mm. So I don't think we have to lose our assignment, our defensive assignments. By trying to guard him, overloading him, mm. because they got three guys out there on the wing. You know, Love at some point is his his jumper will come. Mm. Spruce we know can hit it, and then you hit the, the young kid they got. That yeah, and that that was the one that I said I was worrying about going into the game. Mm. So we don't have to worry about. I'd rather Jimmy get his two than they feast on threes. But my thing is why didn't why did he didn't put McBride in for that intensive defense? Well, that wouldn't have mattered if we if we all going to clog on him anyway. I'm talking about just for the, I don't know. Yeah, but Brian could have got some. He could have got some minutes. Yeah, he could have got some minutes. But if you're gonna if you're gonna leave all the three point shooters just to scramble back and they're moving the ball to find one, they're gonna cut you. Mm. So that, and that's the only way to me they can beat us. Mm. They can't. You get Bam. You get Bam in any type of trouble. They in trouble now. Now and Bam really ain't even do nothing. He was nah. so worried, he was so worried about being on Mitch like Blue. They yeah, but they they we won the rebounding boards, but we didn't dominate the offensive boards like we did in the past series. Mm. So that still has to be a focus for us because that's that's a plus for us. Mm. You know, but again, we we don't have to hang our head um, on on that particular thing. But I look at. Like, like for Jalen Brunson, you know, like, I like the fact that he's taking on the responsibility that, you know, that in the sense that this is his team and he know where he got to be mm. in order to help us, help us improve. But my question for today and, and, you know, in terms of winning this series, that is it like, okay, can you, do you, can you believe a person, can a team believe they can win and be successful or, or sometimes in a series can you know you can win? Mm -hmm. Like, we on that, I think right now the Knicks coming off of that series we just had, mm -hmm. they believe they can win this series. Mm -hmm. And we, But believing, that just gives you like a 50-50 chance, mm -hmm. you know, of, of, of winning the series. I would like us to get into that mode where we know we can win. Mm -hmm. You know, because we way, way deeper than them. I know, Rick, when we was watching the game yesterday, remember I kept saying, oh, we could tie the game and be down. We're going to get back up 10 because that's what we've been doing all year long. Even in the last series, they'll tie it up. We'll go right back up 10. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a believe. I think they know they can. It's just. Well, when you know you can, you just, you're not having those things you did yesterday. I mean, you know, OB shows that they, I think they feel like they know they can. Because those ain't, 
I think we were talking about this yesterday. Those same plays getting ran for Obi. He's just doing that on his own. For for somebody that hasn't really been doing that all year long, got a little bit of it at the end of the year, and then going to the playoffs, actually attacking the basket, making plays, keeping plays alive, and still running the offense or setting screens and stuff. To be doing that and scoring as much as he can, I mean, that that's a sign of like, yeah, I know I could do it. R.J. Barrett, you know what I mean? Playing a little bit better, not not so scared. Yeah, I mean, each kid. Uh, taking to the basket. So I think they know they can win. I think yesterday was like shocking. Like, damn, how, how did we lose just now? Like, well, RJ, to me, yeah. it, it looked like it was like, damn, how we how we down five? And then we then we down three and then we back down eight. I'm like, how do we? Well, I, I think we just stay with what stay with what got us here, for, at individually. Mm. Stay with what got you there, and then then make the adjustment. But don't let don't let the heat dictate what we want to do. Mm. And knocking down threes is something that we know we have to do. Like they talked about Jimmy Butler coming back the night before at nine thirty at night, putting and, up shots. Okay, that's that's and fine. Then maybe the threes don't matter because I think what Randall does bring to the game. I noticed yesterday. We don't like him when we're watching it, him kind of screaming and yelling and being over the top. Maybe that does give us an edge on everybody else. Because you notice, I think Brunson or somebody was screaming at Obi to move, and usually Randall's doing that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Doing all that yelling yeah. to us and the other team. Yeah, He always got some words with the other team. We ain't really have no words for the heat. It was just a peaceful... No, I, see, I know, but they didn't. They didn't harp on it. But it seemed like it seemed like Josh Hart was was out there chirping. Well, Josh but Hart they just always didn't, chirping. They, yeah, they didn't. They Josh didn't Hart focus respectfully on chirp. He don't like over the top, shut up or he no, don't. We, but that. we don't got them kind of play. Even Randall's not like that. Randall just get frustrated. Nah, Randall talks and though. you know he run his mouth because he know these players. But we have. I think just like with RJ, you know, like he found himself in that last series to know that his best strength is going downhill. Mm. And that does open up for his. Like he hit a couple of threes yesterday mm. because now that he got his going downhill game going, mm. he can hit the threes. And right. then when they packed it in down there, then we, that's when we found trouble. You know, you're not a three point shooter until you have to make it. Mm. And when we had to make them, we didn't make them. So yeah. how often will that be? That won't be that often. But we definitely have to get our bigs on them offensive glass. Or just step in one. Just step in yeah, don't have, yeah, like, why yeah. does it have to be a three? Yeah. Like, yeah, the three, I guess, is your better shot. But the better shot is just just step in. Yeah, but that was yeah that that three point shooting was bad. But we know so, that's going to improve. Listen, you live by the three, die by the three. Monica, Monica McNutt was like having trouble even trying to figure out what happened. That that's what happened. You watching the team that if Golden State was in a slump and they couldn't hit no threes, you see what happened to them. They just won. They had to go all seven because you can't hit. Oh, they did win. I didn't watch. Yeah, they won. Oh, I think uh, Steph yeah, I Curry think dropped like fifty. But I, that's that's the difference when you have the clear cut superstar. But the way he do, he's doing it by three points. I mean, he did go to the bat. I mean, yeah, when you have a great player like that, with you, with well, you he, I think he probably was doing what he was doing all series. LeBron did. But everybody LeBron, else wasn't doing. I guess that's what you were talking about. If, as a team, I guess if you have the will to win, do you know you can? Or yeah, I mean, but it, when you got LeBron and Steph Curry, that nah, we gotta win. I think it's a little bit different. I mean, I yeah. No, you're right. I just I just look at we we have a plus. We actually have two pluses because we have an A plus and we got an A minus. Brunson is an A plus. Mm -hmm. Julius is an A minus. Because when Julius is on top of his game, I mean, I know people just don't want to give him that, but if you take him at his full strength, mm -hmm. at his full throttle of everything he brings to the game, it ain't, it ain't many players no more in the NBA. Them other guys getting old. It ain't many people that can stop Julius no more. Did Julius not. did in his head. He just don't bring Julius, that out. Uh, RJ, I know uh, Giannis uh, had the press conference. He said um, they asked him if this is a failed season. For Giannis himself, the player, no. Right? As the team, probably yes. Right? You're the number one seed in your loss as a unit. As a unit, Milwaukee, yeah, it's probably a failed season. Because I, I, I said mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about this all week. <laughs> now, for the Knicks. I thought about it all week. Yeah, for the Knicks now, <laughs> if you lose this series, is it a fail season? No. For Randall or RJ, if you lose, it might be fail for y'all. You know what I mean? 
Like y'all performance dictates where y'all gonna be next year. Mm. If y'all gonna be shopped or y'all they y'all gonna they're gonna move on from you. Yeah, I, I think mean, that's the I think that's the difference when a reporter asks you, do you feel like you failed? Yeah, I think Giannis just didn't season. want to Giannis, give him the no, satisfaction. Giannis that's is clear. Season. Yeah, but Giannis clearly when he was hurt, everybody was nervous. <laughs> you know what I mean? If he wasn't hurt and they lost, do you feel like you failed? Yeah, I failed. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't see him not saying that. But you, you, you went down hurt. Yeah, you came back. For yeah, Knicks, Randall. I, I mean, Randall, he went down hurt. If he comes back and. Well, supposed to is gonna make adjustments like that. We can't be naive to think Fact, that no matter my, who we got, he's gonna make the adjustments. I ain't gonna hold you, Tibbet. You had my man's head still looking smooth by the end of the game. He need to be stressed out. Nah, he was. You didn't see him running that sideline like. Spoelstra was, was running that sideline. He, he was working to be red. I need him to be turning red at everything. Mm -hmm. I need him to be losing his cool. Well, they'll day in Miami too, where they gonna you know they got so much to do afterwards. But anyway, no, they when they go back to Miami, so they 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 good. But I look at this when we go back to Giannis. I think Giannis only said that because he didn't want to give the reporter the satisfaction. Mm. You know, you asking somebody right after a game like that was a season of failure in his case. Now they were the number one seed in the entire league, mm. East West. Well, he said he asked him that same question last year. Yeah, he said you asked us every year, but it was a failure for the season. But you for know, Milwaukee. For Milwaukee. Now I think Giannis was talking about for himself when he did that analysis. Well, like he you took go he, to work every day. You yeah, get the, well, he just took it yeah, personal because yeah. they lost, and you got to be up there. You don't want to be up there, but TV rights, you got to be up there. So yeah, that was just a frustration answer. Yeah, but for Milwaukee, Giannis. yeah, Giannis is valuable for him, probably not, but for the team, yeah. Well, he's the team. That's why. <laughs> that's why you're here. I mean, you, that's what you, I'm saying. You are the, the best team, record right? in the NBA. Don't supposed to lose in the first round for whatever the reason. Okay, mm -hmm. he was hurt, but you're the best team. You're the, that means your star should be out, and you still can mm -hmm. win some games. But still, that opens up the door for everybody else. But even back to your point with us, we can't we can't take lightly just being in the second round. That okay, if we get bounced, we made it to the second round because that now again that would have happened if we didn't play in Milwaukee, and now that we're playing. The Miami Heat, we just automatically got to think beyond mm. the next series. Not overlooking the Miami Heat, mm. but you got to you 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 try to kind of believe too and know that you can get to the next round. Mm. But play each game now as it stands on its own merit, you know, because they're gonna give you that. But Bam mm. is not really being Bam, um. So that's why it looked like well, it, it should be a runaway. Like I said, next. I mean, Miami did give us trouble all season long. We beat them three out of the four times, but mm -hmm. all of them were close games. Uh, Jimmy Butler was annoying. Tyler Hero was annoying. Thank God, I mean, I'm not happy he hurt, but thank God he hurt because that would have been annoying too. But but even with Tyler Hero, it was when all you talk of a sudden about, he hit everything. Right, but but he still should balance out. Even though he starts for them, he still should balance out IQ. Because if high Q, if I if IQ was hitting most of all his shots. Mm -hmm. And Hero's hitting most of all his shots. Then it's coming down to Butler and Randall or Butler and and uh Brunson. Mm. And then and then they don't got nobody else that can go off for big points. So mm. then that's where Randall will come in or the other. So we still should have the edge mm. in, in that whole series, player for player, we still should have the edge. Mm. It's the intangibles that's gonna help us get over this series. But it's just hard sometimes not to try to look ahead. But when you think of our individual players. We got to happy still at least with with Mitchell Robinson and Hartenstein. Oh yeah. We still got to be happy that we got two seven footers. Mm -hmm. Now we lose Jericho for the, you know, yeah, for seeing future or the rest of this series. So we got to hope that one of them don't get in crazy foul trouble and the other one don't get hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, and playing the physical game with Miami, it's not to say that that couldn't happen. You something either. to think about that. Um, I know we were talking about right before the show is. We second round, now all of a sudden you get the rumors of Carl Anthony Towns might want to come to the Knicks. Now for me, Mitch this series, I told you last time, I don't see no big man that's better than Mitch other than the actual superstars, right? Uh, on Philly, Joel Embiid, uh -huh. Denver, um, Jokic. After that, uh, maybe Anthony Davis. Oh, yeah, Sacramento, yeah, he's coming. Yeah, you got to Even though him. he lost. But then after that, who better than, I don't think Towns is the, he's not the big man the Knicks need because you see how we play our big man. 
Well, he don't. He don't really rebound. But I, yeah, it's hard. It's hard really to. If he was all right, so I like Hardenstein. If it was we're like gonna a, do this, but I don't really want to go into next yeah, year. We'll do this. No, but all I'm saying is, if Towns switch with Hartenstein, I can see, right? Because you're gonna try to get Towns and then put him in the starting lineup. Ah, uh, nah. For me, I would rather our big men actually play big men, and then Towns play Hartenstein spot. I would rather see that. Well, we know that that's not the way that it would probably happen. It won't so happen that way. So you would I have to look, you would have to look at uh, that you lose. You lose defensive intimidation. Mm. Um, you lose rebounding. Well, you lose in traffic rebounding. Mm. Um, but you gain 20, 25 points. And so, stretch a little bit. so what, right, you get, well, yeah, that whole 25 comes all over the court. So that's what you, and now if you still got Randall, you still get rebounded because Randall rebounds. If you got a heart, you still get rebounded. But that's what you lose. You lose defensive intensity on the glass. Yeah, no. Nah. Um, and you lose, you definitely lose intimidation shot blocking. You was gonna have Mitch and Towns, and then Towns come off the bench. Yeah. Nah, they would have never took Towns for that much money. That's to what come I'm off the bench. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's the conversation that's gonna come up because they said there will be mutual interest there. But it's just it's hard. It's hard to look past this playoffs because what we're in right now, mm. it's hard to really look past that and start to think about who we can add because a whole lot of people going to be moved this summer on different teams. I mean, a whole I lot of teams like, came up short. I feel like every series we move up, the more and more, like I told you, even the second round, more and more players going to say, oh, yeah, I want to come play over. Yeah, but the Knicks got to be careful, too. Don't go chasing nobody now. Yeah, you don't prove, chase nobody. You, you prove you can do it without them. Mm. You prove that when your players improve mm. individually, we don't don't go chasing no stars. Mm. Stars want to come, then you just one. come. Y'all said Brunson. Y'all said he's him. Well, then let's, well, if they say that, then... <laughs> But you still got to gotta put a consistent. I think we got we got to really still put a consistent, consistent player around. Yeah, true. But you know, Brunson, and we got to build a wall on that man, and that means he's different. I ain't gonna lie. If he was the same height as KD, he's doing the same thing. Well, you don't do that. They don't do that if Randall's playing. Yeah, so if Randall's playing. He don't. Yeah, that he just goes to show they know the Knicks are streaky. Mm. And if you remember anything from the Pat Riley uh, coaching regime. The way he tracked shots, mm. they, they they already got that calculated. <laughs> mm. They already got the counters that we're going to shoot calculated, where they're going to come off. Mm. You know, Pat Riley already got his team focusing on that. So they probably already they already know, if, we, if without Randall, that if we could trap Brunson and get the ball out of his hand, mm. you know, the Knicks are make a miss. Mm. So we got to make sure next game it comes back and bite him in the ass. Oh, excuse mm. me, bite him in the butt. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm not I'm not overly concerned. It would have just had been nice to get the first one. You know, now you got to go to work. You got to hear all this, you know. I mean, I'm glad my job is a lot of Nick fans. Yeah, I don't know about mine. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm proud. I'm still proud of them. I'm still proud. Of, I'm, I still can't get over the fact that the way we got here, the way that we beat up on Cleveland, mm -hmm. you know, that, that just like tells me that we so much farther along than people want to really give us credit for. Because the minute you start talking about getting to the finals, everybody say back up, back up. I'm not, we don't have to back up. Yeah. Play each game. Boston is not that much of a threat. Yeah, they're a good team. But you can beat Boston with both of them guys getting 30 each. Yeah, we did, we did it all. And you long. still can beat Boston. So not to say it's a foregone conclusion, but mm -hmm. you can go in there knowing that you have a chance to win. And that's all, that's, that's what the whole thing is all about. Because when we always talk about, when they say the Knicks haven't won nothing in a million years, and but the fans... I think people also forget that when you're a Nick fan, it's what the Nick brings you, mm. you know, with our games, the excitement, the Broadway, um, the way everybody talk about the Knicks, the way the city is when the Knicks is winning or Knicks is playing. Mm. You know, even without winning a championship, we like must-see TV, you know, when it comes mm -hmm. to, to New York City. When it comes to the fans, listen, if, I feel like when you're a player, if you feel down or you feel like you can't do it, we're going to tell you, like, nah, he a bum. You can get him. <laughs> like, we're going to tell you, like, who? Yeah. Jimmy Butler, who? Like, yeah, he gonna give you thirty, but now nah, y'all better. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, we definitely individually better, but we'll see. Um, yeah, and that's not much really to talk about today. Is that win? That win tells itself. Um, and in, it's not much any individual player can do, um, other than being efficient. Mm. You know, but but do it. What got you here? Right. Like, it's not that much difference in Cleveland, um, and in Miami because they both guard oriented teams. So you don't have to change your game that much. You just have to up your intensity level. Right. 
you know, for Miami because that's what they do. So I, I think mean, nah, Miami played good. Hart, you know, Hart tried to get them in foul trouble. It wasn't really working. I know they were saying there was complaints about they wasn't really calling the fouls. Mm-hmm. I didn't really see it too much because it seemed like they just let them play. It wasn't like they didn't call it on the next yeah. one. So it wasn't one of those moments. It was just like, ah. Uh, well, it did, but it was times. The way yeah, it, there was times. The that, way that their players was working the rest, they were setting up for the next call. Well, Miami Lyra, was getting that. Kyle Lowry, old school behind. Yeah, that's what he do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but anyway, you know, we, we 0-1 going into this series. It's just a long way to go. I don't think it's going to be any gentleman's sweep for either team on mm-hmm. this in this one. So all we do is sit back and buckle up and then just enjoy the ride. Hey, look, Tiz, if you ain't going to put McBride in, get put me. You already know. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>